You know, this pandemic has impacted the Austin music scene and the national music scene in immeasurable ways. And we have asked longtime executive producer of Austin City Limits, Terry Lacona, to join us and give us kind of some perspective on the music scene. Hi, Terry. Hi, Judy. Good to see you, even if it is, you know, by video and at home. It is always great to see you. Well, let's um, let's start with the big picture. I know that you're one of the producers of the Grammys. You know a lot of the well-known musicians. How is the music community in general handling all of this? And what are some unique ways they're dealing with it? Long story short, Judy, everybody is in limbo, if not a frozen state of uncertainty about what happens now and when will things begin to, to ease up and when will we be able to get back to, to what we always took for granted, you know, in terms of Austin being the live music capital of the world, being able to go to your favorite club or to go see a show at the Irwin Center or at ACL Live, you know, um, and nobody truly knows the answer to that. It's the subject of much speculation, which I'm a part of, you know, every day on the phone or by email talking to people, not just in Austin, but in the music industry in general. And everything keeps getting pushed, you know, a little further and further down the road into June and July. And beyond that, no one is certain. So it's, it's really tragic in many ways that um, Austin has lost that, that, that stage, you know, literally, where people can go and see and experience live music. But on the other hand, of course, Austin being the way it is, it creates an opportunity. And there have been so many really cool live streams with local artists, some of them obviously well-known, some totally unknown, but just taking advantage of the, the fact that people are at home looking for things to see or do and wanting to stay in touch with, with their music. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, uh, which artists kind of really take advantage of that and, and emerge from, from these strange times. Maybe with a, an audience, not at a club, but uh, virtually, you know, at that home like you and I are doing now. So Terry, I know that um, the Austin City Limits stage is often, often graced by some amazing people, especially during South by Southwest when they are in town. Um, what have you guys done for Austin City Limits as far as getting your music out there during this time where you can't do any of the live tapings like we're accustomed to doing? Well, I think the best idea we had uh, in terms of dealing with that was to literally open up our archives and offer dozens of Austin City Limits episodes, not just from our most recent season, but from years past. Um, you know, the, the live streams are great. That being said, it's not the same. The, the, the audio and video quality is not so great sometimes, sometimes pretty bad. And you don't have that shared experience that you do when you go to see a show with an audience. So, and Austin City Limits goes without saying, has the ultimate when it comes to video, audio, quality, the magic that happens on that stage and in that room every time we do a show. So for people to be able to go back and look at some of these episodes, you know, on their TV or on their laptop or on, on their phone at home, I think is another great outlet, um, escape, distraction from the day-to-day -day news and so forth. The loss of John Prine to coronavirus is a real big blow to the music industry. Could we have your reflections on his career and his talent? I know he was on the Austin City Limits stage as recently as 2018. That's right. As I said in our blog post about his news, it was like a dagger to the heart to hear that he had succumbed to COVID-19. He... In many ways, Judy, John Prine meant as much and represented as much about Austin City Limits as Willie or Lyle um, and some of the other classic artists who've done the show. John Prine appeared on Austin City Limits eight times over the years. There aren't many other artists who can, you know, can, can claim that and deservedly so as well. We were lucky to have him in our very early years. I think it was season three he made his first appearance, a very young John Prime. And then as recently as just a year and a half ago, uh, towards the end of 2018, when he, he did the show for what turned out to be the last time. But one thing about John Prime that never changed, 
he's he's such a brilliant songwriter and he's just such a, a sweet loving person self-effacing modest um and and funny as all get out you know he had which was reflected in his uh in his songwriting of course but also just in his personality i'm sure you get asked this question a lot too what advice would you have for a young aspiring songwriter today um Make sure you really love what you're writing because you might have to sing it the rest of your life. <laughs> Final question, Terry. Um, I think everybody knows we're moving. Uh, Austin PBS is moving to brand new digs at Austin Community College. And one thing we're leaving behind is the original Studio 6A. And we have some great shots of, of you reflecting on some of the memories there. But um, if you could just talk about the importance of that listening room and what it's meant kind of in the history of our community. Studio 6A up at KLU on the UT campus. It just has an aura, a magic about it that's hard. It's impossible to define. Um, when I walk into that room by myself, and I still like to do that when I go up to KLU for a meeting or for some other reason, you can almost close your eyes and hear the music, you know, coming from the walls, the echoes at least of all of the people who stood on that, that stage, you know, down through the years. It reminds me of when the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame first called us over 10 years ago and said that they wanted to declare our studio as a historic landmark. Our first reaction was, what? It's a, it's a TV studio. And they explained, no, you may not realize it because you, you've been there and you know it, it's, it's a place that you work, but it's a place where decades worth of music, rock and roll and all of its subgenres, you know, uh, was performed and captured as a document, as an archive of, of American music and beyond. So it, um, it's a very meaningful place. It's really, sad to be moving out of that studio again <laughs> you know we moved out 10 years ago to our beautiful new home at the ACLI Lady Theater downtown which we love to death by the way but um, and that was a, a sad moment but you know to KLU's credit they preserved studio success so if you walk in the door today it looks almost exactly like it did the last time we did a show there the stage is still there the bleachers the, the skyline backdrop and, uh, but knowing now that this time it's for real, that when KLO moves to its, its uh, beautiful new home, Studio 6A will be no more. It'll just be an empty TV studio. We always have to think of the silver lining, so we'll just remember the great memories that were made there. And, and we appreciate the silver linings that, that you're, you and your team at ACL are giving us all the capturing these concerts that you all have done and allowing folks to share in those right now has really been therapeutic for those of us who love music. So thank you, Terry. It's been therapeutic for me too, Judy, believe me. <laughs> I enjoy looking back at these past episodes as much as anybody else. Wonderful. Terry Lacona, executive producer of Austin City Limits. You take care, Terry, and it's good to see you. Thank you, Judy. Looking forward to seeing you and everybody in person soon. <laughs>